many times when I'm reviewing someone else's DriveWorks project, I'll notice that they have quite a few if statements, and in many cases, nested if statements. In some of those cases, we could actually simplify things quite a bit by using a different function. So today I want to talk a little bit about the indirect function that oftentimes gets overlooked. And we want to make sure that if we are using if statements because it's necessary for the logic, just make sure that you've documented what those things do because they can be really difficult for someone else to come in after you to make sense out of what's going on. Even in the case where you can read the if statement, it's not always logical why you wrote it that way. So comments are always very, very useful. However, many times we've seen nested if statements when they really weren't necessary. And in those cases, there are other types of functions that might make a lot more sense. Maybe just building a simple table, doing a lookup, or using a choose from function. Be sure to look that one up. Or as we'll look at today, the indirect function. In this simple example, we have a drop down where we select are we looking at cats or dogs. The selected critter box is indicating based off of our first selection and then a secondary follow up selection which one we show in the yellow box. So we notice as long as my selection says dogs it just ignores the cats selection. So this particular box was set up with an if statement. So we said if we have used if we have selected dogs then use this drop down if we select cats use this drop down and that's not bad if it's just these two scenarios but it gets a little bit more complex when we go to well what if there are three different types of animals or heaven forbid dozens of different types and then it starts becoming pretty obvious that we'll want to come up with a different way of building this logic Looking back at our form, we'll see that this particular selection is based strictly off of if cats, then show the cats drop down, otherwise show the dogs drop down. Which leads us to say, well, what happens if we create another one? And this one, instead of being dogs, let's say that we're going to list chickens here. We'll populate this with a few list of chickens that I know of. So we have grilled, fried, I am in the south. And uh, well, there's some that are still clucking. Let's change the label so that makes a little more sense as well. We'll add chickens to our dropdown for our primary selection. And if we test it, we'll see that, of course, we can pick chickens and we can pick different things at the bottom, but it's still showing us dogs because our logic said that this is either cats or if they didn't pick cats, it's always dogs. This is where we're going to modify this rule instead of using an if statement and where we would have to create yet another nested if statement. We're actually going to blank all this out and use the indirect function in just a moment. So what I want to do is look at the drop down for what they have selected and I'm going to add on the word return. And we'll see that it's telling us, hey, let's get the return value from the chickens dropdown. Unfortunately, though, if we just type this in, that is what it shows in the text box. It's just the words. All I have to do to correct this and actually tell it evaluate what I've typed in is to use the indirect function. This will tell the software, take the text that we've combined 
and actually tell it to compute that. So now when we have dogs selected, we see that it does display the dogs. Now if I select chickens, it is properly behaving. And not a single if statement required. All I'm doing is using the indirect function to combine words and then tell it to compute that. Hope this gives you some ideas to play around with to avoid some of your nested if statements when a simple function could suffice.